Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next part of this chapter, which is composite functions. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an example here so that we can put the composite functions in, in context. Now, let's say, for example, we knew that these were the exchange rates for the yen to the dollar and the dollar to the euro. Let's say, for example, 150 yen was equal to one US dollar and one US dollar was equal to half a euro. So if you had 300 yen, how many euros would you actually have? Now, if we went ahead and took this step by step, I would take 300 yen and multiply it by this conversion factor of one US dollar to 150 yen. The yens would cancel. 300 divided by 150 is two. So there would be two US dollars. And then after that, I would take the two US dollars times it by another conversion factor, which is the second one here, of 0 0.5 euros divided by 1 US dollar, so the US dollars would cancel out. 2 times by 0 0.5 is just 1 euro. So, I know for a fact that I, if I had 300 yen, I would actually have 1 euro. Now, let's go ahead and see how this example here actually relates to what composite functions are. Notice I actually did two things. I started off with yen, I put it into a function, or I converted it so that I actually came out with a dollar, the dollars, and then I took the dollars and then I put it into another conversion factor to come up with the euros. So basically, if you want to think about it in terms of functions now, what's actually happening is that I'm taking a domain element, putting it into a function, coming up with a different range element, but that range element now becomes the domain element of the second function, which is then churning out another final range element. And that's what I have here. And this is what composite functions are. They say that if I actually go ahead and take the composite functions, will actually take a domain value, put it into the function, come out with a range value, that range value will then become the domain value of the other function, put it into that function there, and then come up with the final range value. Now, this schematic here is actually representative of this here. And this says, y is equal to g of f of x, or you can also see it written this way, g of f of x. So notice that what happens then is that as with all of your order of operations, you start from the inside and work out. So I put in an actual value into my domain value for f. So the x value would go into f first, f would then come out with a particular value for its range. That range value then becomes the domain value for g, put it into g and come up with a final range value for g. Now, let's take a look at an example to put this into context with some of the more algebraic kind of functions that we're going to deal with. Let's say, for example, that f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 and g of x is equal to x squared minus 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at what g of f of 2 would be. If I did g of f of 2, again, I would substitute in the 2 into the f function because we're working again from the inside out as our order of operations prescribes. So then that would be 2, right? If I put in the 2 into the f of x, that would be 2 times 2 plus 3, which would be, of course, going to be 7. That becomes the range value of this function f evaluate at 2. That then becomes the domain value for g, so I then evaluate g at uh, g of 7. So g of 7 would then be equal to uh, 7 squared minus 4, which is going to be 45. Now, let's say, for example, we go ahead and switch those two around, and let's say, for example, that I have f of g of 2. So notice the only thing that's happening right now is that I'm switching the order in which the functions are actually composed. So if I did that, I go through this whole process and I come up with a value of 7. The key to this fact here is that even though these two functions, the only thing that we're doing is commuting them in the composition of the functions, notice that they're not equal. So notice that composition of functions is not commutative. Okay? Now, one of the things that you might also find quite interesting as well as like with this example, wouldn't it be nice if you could just go straight from the yen to the euros? And sure enough, you could do that if you wanted to. You could do it also with the composition of functions as well. If we wanted to say, for example, find g of f of x, 
instead of actually substituting in a value for x, evaluating f, then putting it into g, what I could do is I could just go ahead and take a look at, let me go ahead and call this y, sorry. I could then go ahead and just go ahead and take in all of the, all of the whole entire function for f and put it into g. So in other words, I know that f of x was 2x plus 3. If I take this 2x plus 3, which of course would represent all of the range values, then I take those values and I put it into the domain of g. So wherever there's an x value for g, instead of x, I actually have to put in the function f of x, which is 2x plus 3. So I have 2x plus 3 squared minus 2. I expand that using FOIL. And if I subtract 2, this composite function right here could actually be just written once this way. And if I substitute it in a 2 here, I could just substitute it into this equation here. And again, I'd come up with 45 directly. So, that's what composite functions are, and that's how they work. They work in combinations with each other, and remember, they are not commutative. Okay, so give it your best shot to see how you do with composite functions. See you next time. Bye-bye.